In 2014, we had gotten alerts from the Coral Reef Watch program that we were going to be experiencing a bleaching event. And at first, we were a bit startled. We, we didn't think that we were going to be experiencing that. Um, Hawaii had never at that point really experienced a mass bleaching event in the main Hawaiian Islands. Um, we took the, the forecast that we had gotten from Coral Reef Watch and we got in the water in um, Kaneohe Bay here on Oahu and we actually saw with our own eyes what you know a high to severe bleaching alert really looks like you know it was really dramatic we had anywhere from 80 to 90 percent of our corals that were completely bleached white and for a lot of us on that team we had never swam over a completely bleached reef like that and so um, it really was startling it was like swimming over a skeleton of a reef um, the fish were there but the foundation that holds it together um, was really in peril at that point So the Hawaii Division of Aquatic Resources uh, conserves the marine and freshwater uh, resources here in Hawaii, which includes coral reefs, fish, and invertebrates. We came across the Coral Reef Watch product um, in two, uh, 2014 when Hawaii started experiencing its most severe bleaching event. And basically, as managers, we were looking for answers on you know, what we can expect out of this um, thermal anomaly that we were having, how bad it was gonna get, um, if we could tell where the bleaching was going to be the worst. And um, you know, in that moment, there was really a lack of information. We were looking for consolidated, um, concise information that we could use in our decision-making uh, plans. In 2015, um, Hawaii actually experienced a second coral bleaching event and we actually knew about this months before because of the Coral Reef Watch program. Um, so because we had learned about it the year previous, they, we started looking at the products months before the predicted um, temperatures were going to start rising. Um, and how we used the product was that we, we started looking at these forecast maps and we started seeing that the, the temperatures were going to raise specifically in, in one area of the state along the, the western coast of the island of Hawaii Island. And so we brought that to the managers at Division of Aquatic Resources. Um, we looked over it with the decision makers and we actually used that to prioritize our monitoring and our management um, strategies for that year. And we're now using it after the bleaching event to try and think of what we can do to accelerate the coral's recovery. Um, so we can, again, pinpoint those areas and really focus our efforts rather than trying to focus on the whole state. So yeah, the value of the Coral Reef Watch program, uh, I, I would say before we had the product, it would take us anywhere from six months to up to a year to really mobilize a response to a coral bleaching event. Now that we have these products, we can get a, a great overview of the situation and we can mobilize uh, resource managers within about a week. We use satellites to look at the sea surface temperatures that cause coral bleaching and other environmental stresses to coral reefs. We also use climate models that can give us an idea of what corals are going to do a few months out, such as getting a four-month outlook on the amount of coral bleaching that may be happening. Our products rely on anomalies. Anomalies are the difference between what you see right now and the normal conditions that a coral would see. Those normal conditions, called climatologies, are developed using a sea surface temperature product from the National Centers for Environmental Information called Pathfinder. We use Pathfinder to build that climatology for our products because it's the only high resolution product available that can be compared to our new five kilometer products that we've developed and are using globally. These five kilometer products are extremely important because they're getting down to the level of a coral reef or very close to the size of a coral reef. 
Resource managers can then look, for example, at what it's like from one reef to the next as you go up and down the Florida Keys or anywhere else in the world. They can look at what the differences are from one side of the island to the next. And so without a good climatology to develop these products, the climatology we build from Pathfinder, we wouldn't have the products that people rely on today. So coral bleaching is a general stress response to a variety of, a variety of factors. Um, corals bleach when uh, there's abrupt or prolonged changes in the environment um, through changes in salinity, changes in exposure to toxins, to sedimentation. There's also the mass coral bleaching events that we see are due to prolonged thermal stress um, above the, the tolerance that corals can um, live within. Uh, the Hawaii Institute of Marine Biology is a uh, research institute um, that is part of the University of Hawaii at Manoa and we have a team of fa faculty, graduate students and postdoctoral researchers conducting a wealth of research on everything from uh, coral physiology to, to marine mammals. The Pathfinder climate data gives us a long-term climatology for us to compare deviations or changes to what's expected and what the corals normally experience. So we use this information in order to forecast disease outbreaks in the Hawaiian archipelago. Diseases are a normal aspect of every ecosystem and it's okay when you have low levels of disease prevalence, but when you have a disease outbreak it can often lead to reduce fecundity so the corals can't produce as many offspring, it might slow their growth, or it can even kill the entire colony. And often when we have these big outbreak events, colonies that took hundreds of years to grow are killed in sometimes less than two weeks. So it's really important to understand what you expect in terms of an outbreak event so you can practice potential mitigation strategies. We are using the NOAA Coral Reef Watch products in several capacities. Um, the products were invaluable for us um, at the Hawaii Institute of Marine Biology as well as across to governmental and non-governmental agencies to help us identify uh, which regions in the Hawaiian um, archipelago are most affected by these thermal stress events. Um, and predicted to have elevated levels of bleaching. And so with that, we're able to deploy our, um, our monitoring teams to survey those um, areas that are forecasted to be at most at risk. <music>